All right, HBO Max is coming into the Oscar race with Judas and the Black Messiah. Let's talk about this one. Now, this movie hits HBO Max this Friday. I was fortunate enough to have seen it a couple days early, so here's an early review for you. Let's dig in to this awards contender. Now, Judas and the Black Messiah focuses on the chairman of the Black Panther Party back in the day, Fred Hampton, who's played here by Daniel Kaluuya. And the story also follows a man named William O'Neill, who's played here by Lakeith Stanfield, who is arrested by the FBI, but instead of going to prison, strikes a deal and becomes an FBI informant, joins the Black Panther Party to spy on, you know, Hampton and to spy on the Black Panther organization in Chicago and report back to the FBI. And as a result, this leads to uh, the demise of Fred Hampton. Now, I was really excited to see this one because every trailer that came out for this movie just had this palpable energy to it, had me, like, gave me chills. And I also really wanted to see some new performances from Lakeith Stanfield and Daniel Kaluuya, who I think are two of the most exciting actors working today. And let me just tell you right off the bat, this is one of the best acted movies I have seen in a while. It, th these are some truly great performances. I mean, Daniel Kaluuya is definitely going to get the bulk of the praise for this movie. And, you know, it's definitely uh, praise that is isn't unwarranted because he's so damn good in this movie. He commands the screen. He's almost unrecognizable. I mean, to think this is the same guy who's in Black Panther, Get Out, Widows, it just, it's unbelievable the range this guy has demonstrated, you know, his work with accents, the way he can add these little subtle nuances to the characters that he plays to make them feel really fleshed out and, you know, make you sympathize with them no matter what kind of person they end up being. He's so good in this movie and he's so good at fleshing out this man because this is a movie that doesn't just have scenes of him kind of leading crowds and making powerful speeches. You get a lot of behind the scenes you know, of him kind of in quieter moments, you know, sharing a moment with uh, the love of his life or sharing moments with some of his, you know, fellow members where he's just being very real with them and he kind of has this like quiet tenderness with them. And Chloe kind of nails all these different facets of that character and makes Fred Hampton not just feel like a caricature or just feel like an impersonation of a man, but feel, feel like a fully realized three-dimensional interpretation of this man. And I thought it was just an unbelievably good performance by Kluya. But let's not leave out Lakeith Stanfield, who is just as good. And he's kind of like on the opposite end of the spectrum where he, a lot of the emotion that he has is kind of simmering beneath the surface, all this inner, inner turmoil, all this anxiety, paranoia, anger, fear, sadness, all of it. And you can tell that this is a character that is barely ha hanging on as he gets deeper and deeper into the Black Panther organization. And Stanfield just continues to prove his power on screen. He's so good, especially the scenes that he shares with Kluya there aren't a ton of them but when they are on screen together they're so good with one another you can tell they're bringing out this ferocity in one another that is really engaging and entertaining to just watch unfold and lastly i think dominique fishback who i think made her big debut in netflix's project power uh late last year not a great movie and she didn't really get a ton to do and she was one of the highlights of that movie but she really gets a chance to kind of show her talents here uh, and she's very good in the movie and i think she brings a lot of earned emotion to the proceedings, and I loved her scenes with Chloe's Hampton in this movie. As for the movie itself, I think this is a movie that has such great energy to it. There are some scenes that are truly powerful, whether it's a scene of Fred making a powerful speech in front of, you know, prospective members or members that he already has, you know, trying to kind of drum up, you know, uh, support, trying to drum up funds, trying to, you know, drum up passion. Those scenes are fantastic, but also, like I said, I think some of the quieter moments in this movie really sing where, you know, characters are kind of just sharing sadness with, with one another or sharing anger with one another over this conflict that the Black Panthers are having with the police at the time and how it's kind of just like violence against violence and it's just, it's not, not solving any of these issues and how their mistreatment is kind of making them feel. And I really like that this movie explores that too. I mean, this was an extremely tense time in American history where, you know, the Black Panthers were having this really tense, violent conflict with the police, you know, trying to fight for civil rights. And this is a period of time that is very, very important, very powerful, still relevant today. I mean, this is a movie that shouldn't feel as relevant as, relevant as it does, but I think this movie is all the more powerful because it's still relevant, even though it's telling us a story that took place decades ago. And that really tells you something and shows you something that honestly is a little bit disheartening, let's be honest. And director Shaka King, I think, who is making his big feature debut here, he, you know, he's directed some things in the, in the past, but this is definitely his big debut. And I really like what he does with the camera here. There are some scenes that were, where there are some really nice long takes, especially some of the shootout sequences in this movie or some of the more climactic scenes. I think he films really well. He definitely knows how to ratchet up the tension when he really needs to. He definitely puts character first 
first. He's not just trying to make a movie that's about shootouts or gunfights or just all out violence. He cares about the story. He cares about getting the story right and getting these characters right. And I think when you're putting character first in a movie like this, that is of the utmost importance. So I'm really glad that that was a top priority for him. And I think he nails that. And like I said, thought his camera work was fantastic in the movie. And he made some really cool creative choices, not only in terms of you know how certain conversations take place or how certain climactic confrontations take place, but where he's putting the camera, how he's blocking actors. It's all very well done. And I'm very excited to see where he goes next. I mean, really the only issue I have with this movie is sometimes the pacing can be a little bit inconsistent. Like I said, this is a powerful movie and when it gets going, it really gets going. But then there are some kind of pitfalls where the pacing definitely becomes a little bit sluggish or we get some scenes that we don't entirely need or maybe, you know, don't feel like they're entirely necessary to the movie where they could have been trimmed a little bit. But other than that, I think Judas and the Black Messiah is a powerful movie. It's a timely movie. It's really well performed. It's very well directed and made. It's got a great score as well. And I think it's a movie we should be spreading the word about. We should be getting this movie more awards buzz. I really don't know why it's not getting nearly enough recognition, you know, with, you know, awards voters. It's got some of the best performances I've seen. It's got some of the best uh, storytelling that I've seen recently. And I definitely think it should be in the awards conversation, especially come Academy Awards time. But we'll see. So in the end, I'm going to be giving Judas and the Black Messiah, I'm going to be giving this movie a B plus. Really enjoyed it from beginning to end. Think it's powerful. I think it's a, a very important movie. And I think it's a movie we should be talking about a lot more. And let's help spread the good word. Let's help get more people to see this movie when it hits theaters and HBO Max this Friday. I think it's going to be one of the best movies you see in 2021. Mark my words. So that is my review of Judas and the Black Messiah. Really hope you enjoyed it. Really hope you take it into consideration. If you consider seeing this movie or not, definitely let me know what you thought of this movie after you have seen it in the comment box below. Definitely curious to hear your thoughts and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more movie reviews, TV reviews, more fun stuff like that. And until next time, everybody, I'm Tom Chattelbash, YouTube's most reliable movie critic.